we will take the questions as they come i do have a few questions already that i'm going to start with so let's start uh, with a few questions and i do have dr puneet reddy from our team is going to take this sessions today so the first question <clears throat> i started my preparation for step 1 recently and as step 1 is changing to pass fail in january of next year should i take it before then or should i wait till it becomes pass fail okay. hello pavan hello everyone so uh, yeah to answer this question about step 1 pass or fail uh, some facts that we know about the step 1 pass or fail or uh, number 1 that um, it is going to come into effect no earlier than january 2022 uh, so we don't exactly know the date when it is when it is going to start and uh, number 2 is if you take your exam before uh, january 2022 you will uh, continue to retain the three digit score and uh, so if you take the exam before january 2022 and uh, you score high that is um, at 245 plus then it will be a benefit to you because uh, your transcript will show um, high score compared to others who may just have a pass or fail uh, but saying that even if you have a pass or fail in your uh, report uh, the program directors will uh, put more emphasis on the step to ck uh, so that's where your focus should be there and um, in any case you will be needing uh, around 7 to 9 uh, months of preparation for the step 1 uh, and usmle exams are uh, not something that you should rush because here once you do a mistake uh, you cannot change them so never rush to take the exam uh, but if you are comfortable able to take them before uh, january 2022 then yes go ahead okay so the next question is around accreditation i am in the first year of medical school in india i plan to take my step 1 in the internship year but i've heard that the wfme accreditation rule is coming in place for 2024 and medical schools from india are not in the list so this is a very common question we get should i drop out of my usmle plans yes so uh, this is basically about the eligibility to apply for the step exams and uh, ecfmg certification the current rule is that uh, if your school is uh, listed in the uh, world directory of medical uh, schools then and it has a ecfmg sponsor note then you can apply for the ecfmg certification and uh, the step exams and uh, we will be posting um, a link to the uh, yep. world directory of medical school list in the comment section uh, you can take a look if um, your school is listed there and has a sponsor note uh, but uh, starting 2024 uh, what the cfmg mentioned is that uh, for you to be eligible to apply for the usmle your medical school accrediting agency in the country uh, for in, in for example in india it is the nmc that should be recognized by the wfme uh, as of now there are very few uh, schools over the uh, you know across all the countries that are um, uh, Uh, you know eligible and uh, recognized by the uh, wfme and uh, we will be posting the link to that as well you can take a look on um, which agencies are recognized by the wfme and india is not uh, one of them so uh, saying this uh, the ecfmg also mentioned that if you apply for the ecfmg certification before 2024 uh, that is uh, you don't have to uh, you know uh, take the usmle exam or have the ecfmg certification you just have to apply for the ecfmg certification which is basically the form 186 process or the certificate of verification if you do this process before 2024 uh, you will be eligible to proceed under the current rules that is the wdoms rules and you will be able to even take the exams or apply for the exams after 2024 and uh, the ecfmg uh, the credential the certificate of verification or the ecfmg id is valid for 5 uh, years before you take your first uh, usmle step exam so uh, i think the path is still very clear and you should continue to work on it and uh, not drop your plans okay so just to be clear as long as you can just apply for certification which is the form 186 process you should be all good to go regardless of whatever happens in 2024 right okay good uh next question is around review of nbmes uh so how to review the nbmes what should my strategy be okay so yeah this is again a very important topic uh, nbmes are no doubt 
uh, very good assessment tools that we have. Uh, but it is also important to review NVMEs uh, meticulously to make the best out of them. But uh, at the same time, you should make sure you're not overdoing it or wasting too much time searching about vague things in, on the internet. So when you review your NVMEs, uh, make sure uh, you do these things like uh, number one, you understand why you are doing those mistakes. And that is, uh, is it because of knowledge deficiency or uh, is it because uh, you didn't read the question or the answer choices clearly or is it because uh, you you were confused between two options or uh, is it because uh, you couldn't finish on time that is um, the issues with speed so once you narrow down like what is uh, hurting you the most then you start working on the same uh, this is a very good uh, way to use NVMEs. And uh, we have a video uh, on more details about the same. Uh, we will be posting uh, the link to that on uh, the comment section and uh, you can watch that as well later on. So uh, number two is that uh, you should also be uh, taking a note and reviewing the concepts that are asked in NVMEs in and around those concepts um, uh, really well. And uh, the best way to do this is uh, take a note of that uh, concept uh, come on to uh, UWorld and use the search function on UWorld to type or enter that uh, topic or concept and then uh, read the questions or answer choices that are related to that particular uh, concept that come up when you search on the UWorld search function. Uh, that is the best way. And number two is uh, you type the uh, search, uh, you type the keyword and then uh, type AMBOSS beside it and uh, do a quick Google search and you will get that particular topic on AMBOSS library as well. Uh, so this way you are sticking to the high yield resources and uh, you are uh, reviewing them, uh, revising them again and mastering them. And also you're not spending um, or wasting too much time searching about them on the internet. Uh, number three is also about the images or uh, tables that are asked on the um, NBME. These are also super high yield and you should be uh, taking a note or saving them to review later. Um, then is about, uh, there are some vague questions that are asked in these uh, NBMEs. That is, the question has features pointing out towards both the option choices. Uh, this is very common. Uh, you should not dig in too much um, about these or start uh, worrying about them too much. Uh, so here, the uh, the NVMe is basically testing your test taking skills over here rather than the concept or the knowledge itself. Uh, so the answer will usually be the one that has the most specific feature in the question. So uh, use that strategy to solve it or, um, and then just uh, sometimes just take it as a, a learning point and move on. Uh, don't waste your time too much uh, around these things. Okay, next question. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Next questions come comes on the CK. So you know, many people mention that the exam is vague. How to tackle this? Yes, uh, so most of us feel that the exam is vague, again, uh, for the same reason, that um, the option choices are uh, very close over there. And uh, you don't usually notice the buzzwords uh, for that particular disease or concept in the question. Um, so the best way to tackle this is, uh, UWorld has most of the concepts that are usually tested on the exam. Uh, but what you should, uh, uh, keep in your mind when you are reviewing or revising or uh, starting your world is that uh, take a note of those differentiating features that your world gives. Okay, so sometimes they are very clear out um, highlighted in the answer um, clearly highlighted and sometimes they are hidden in those answered explanations. Make sure you take a note of them uh, and review them towards the end of your preparation. Um, that way uh, you will be very active in picking up any small clues or hints that are given on the questions on the exam day. And you will be able to narrow down the answer choices uh, with confidence. Um, also another tip over here is think like a clinician, like uh, imagine that you are the doctor on that day and the clinical scenarios are your patients. Uh, so make the best choices for them, uh, keep aside the guidelines, etc. cetera. Uh, this attitude also helps and keeps you away from stress in tackling those uh, fake questions because also in real life patients come, uh, do not exactly come like they are uh, described in the textbooks. Uh, they come with these uh, overlapping features. Yep, yep. Okay, so uh, continuing with another CK question that uh, the number of questions on patient safety, legal, ethic, is ethical issues in CK have increased uh, post November 2020. What is the best strategy to prepare for uh, these kind of questions? 
Uh, yes. So yes, the number of questions on ethics, legal ethics, and uh, legal issues and patient safety have gone up, and people have reported up to uh, five to six questions uh, per block that are coming on these uh, topics. Uh, like it's just around uh, the ten percent that USMLE already mentioned. Uh, but what I want you to uh, notice over here is uh, number one, uh, from my experience and also those who took the exam recently, uh, there is no resource for ethics that covers it really well for the exam. And uh, if you spend the same amount of time and effort on other um, subjects or uh, systems, uh, that will benefit you more. Uh, the solution is basically just to your Ambos Ethics and uh, you, the USMLE has some good videos on ethics. You can do them. Uh, so it's about doing these core resources uh, and then having the core ethics principles in your brain. And uh, rest all depends on how you think on the exam day. Uh, number two is that. Uh, uh, it's also about ethics versus the other systems. The others are still the majority of the exam. They are 90% of the exam. So put your efforts and uh, all the resource, I mean, time on that and um, that will uh, help you improve your score and be more efficient. Okay. Now, uh, let me take a question that just came in uh, from user Fund Central. Is PubMed indexation necessary for research publication? So I'll take that. Uh, research is increasingly becoming important in this match process, especially if you have gaps or red flags or maybe low scores. Uh, if you're a recent graduate, maybe the PubMed indexed uh, publication may not be that important. Uh, but otherwise, yes, try to get as much uh, US publication, you know, US focus, whether it is conference abstracts or uh, manuscripts. Uh, I think that will definitely help you. So uh, another question for you, uh, Praneet, from Devanshi Rawal. Do we need to do Kaplan ethics? OK, um, so if you're talking about uh, the Kaplan ethics for step one, that is the 100 cases uh, of ethics, then I would say, uh, from my experience and also others, uh, the concepts are uh, now very old. And uh, I don't think any of those are being tested on the exam. So that is really uh, low yield right now. So you don't have to do that. Focus on um, the U-World ethics and AMBOSS ethics and dirty OSML ethics, uh, like I mentioned, even for step one or CK. Yeah. Next question. If I want to apply for 2022 match, when should it I be done with step one CK and OET? All right. Uh, so I think you should be done uh, with step one by now uh, and started preparation for CK because it takes around five to six months of uh, dedicated time uh, to prepare. Uh, and uh, OET usually takes one to two weeks to prepare, but it's about finding the date and uh, having the result uh, come out. So yeah, and also remember that you should be uh, have uh, done with USC and have uh, LORs before uh, you apply. And uh, also keep in mind about uh, the ECFMG certification, which can take anywhere from uh, five days to two weeks uh, after you are done with your last exam, provided you have your credential verification done, which by itself can take uh, 10 days to one and a half months, uh, depending upon if your uh, medical school has a uh, uh, electronic uh, portal or uh, the mailing or courier system in place. Uh, but to keep it straight, uh, I would say uh, you will you should be done with all your exams at least four weeks before uh, the September 15th to apply on time. And uh, that doesn't mean you can't apply at all. Uh, but uh, uh, if you apply on time, uh, that will be your best chance. OK, uh, then uh, another question again, you know, now OET is becoming big. So the question on OET, how long does it take to prepare for OET? And then probably what are some of the resources? Right. Uh, so OET, uh, usually people take around uh, one to two weeks. Uh, for most IMGs, it takes that time uh, to uh, prepare for the uh, OET, depending upon the English proficiency. And uh, it usually has the reading, listening, writing, and speaking sections uh, that are tested. And uh, the reading and listening is what uh, people usually find it easy. And uh, the speaking and uh, writing is where people find it uh, difficult. Uh, and coming to the resources, the official OET website has some uh, practice tests and uh, questions that you can do. And uh, we will post the link to that as well in the comment section. Uh, so then apart from that, there are also some uh, 
Google Drive links where you can find um, the resources and we will be posting the link to that as well. Uh, so for the reading section uh, and the listening section, uh, I would say that you can uh, do the practice, uh, you can do the practice questions and um, uh, the sample questions from the official website and the link that we just gave you, um, that will be sufficient. Uh, but for the writing, I would say uh, that um, you can do the writing questions as well from the link that we provided. But towards the end of your preparation, I would suggest that you take two to three mock tests uh, with one of the uh, tutoring services that are recommended by the official OAT website or anyone uh, outside um, so that you know your mistakes and you correct them because writing is where usually people fail or um, underperform. So you want to be cautious on that. And about speaking, uh, the link has some good uh, speaking cards. You should be practicing them with someone who is also going for the exam. And uh, it's about taking the criticism, uh, correcting each other and um, being ready. So yeah, I think that's overall the preparation for OET. Okay. So those were the questions that we had already received and we answered. So if there are any other questions, we are here and feel free to ask guys. Uh, so we'll be here for another couple of minutes. If you have more questions, you can you can type in the chat box. We are here. If any one of you has questions on step one, rotations, OET, or CK. All right. If there are no other questions, uh, thank you all for your time. We appreciate it. And uh, thank you, Praneet. This was very, very helpful. Thanks, Pavan.